Hey there guys, so yeah look, growing a decent set of shoulders. Now, a lot of people overcomplicate the process and the process that I use, and it's you know the same in any regards to building whatever body part you want, um, you need to take whatever you're trying to do seriously. So in the case of shoulders, try and look, you know, at it from the perspective of trying to get stronger as opposed to necessarily just trying to grow bigger shoulders. And when you look at the goal differently, um, you know, it becomes much more objective as opposed to subjective. So what I mean by that is, you know, look at, you know, your overhead press, um, whether it be, you know, barbell overhead, log press, or, you know, dumbbell. Um, and then what you want to try and do, you know, whatever variation you choose, you want to try and increase the weight and the reps, you know, on that given exercise. The more reps you get in general, um, you know, the more hypertrophy you're going to get to an extent. Um, for me, you know, I chase 20 reps just because, you know, for me, I found going really high rep um, had a lot more carryover in terms of upper back development um, and also just helped, you know, me with my general shoulder health. Not that I have any issues with shoulders, but, um, you know, I do a lot of heavy bench pressing. So looking after the shoulders in that regard um, and not, you know, going heavy, heavy all the time. Um, makes a big difference because I go relatively heavy with bench press anyway. So when you look at, you know, your overhead press in that light and, you know, you start treating it like you would your bench press, your squat or your deadlift and you're trying to be competitive about it, you'll find that, you know, your numbers are going to increase, which is then going to lead to overall more, you know, deltoid development. Now, I heavily favor the one arm press because when I do it, I'm not fixed, you know, on a barbell. Um, and I find, you know, if I'm trying to barbell press heavy overhead, I, I'm not going to say I lean back, but there is a lot more um, spinal extension involved. And I find, you know, that spinal extension can aggravate my lower back um, if I'm pressing multiple times a week versus the dumbbell because, you know, you don't have to lean backwards to get out the way of the bar. It removes, you know, that extension of the spine. Well, the hyperextension part of the spine. Because um, when you're standing upright, you know, in theory, your spine, I'm not going to say it's in, ex in extension, but it's not also, it's not in flexion either. But as soon as you start leaning back, it's classed as being in, you know, hyperextension. Um, so, yeah, you know. The dumbbell, I find, you know, removes that aspect and there's a bit more, you know, lateral flexion of the um, spine. That's where you're leaning. And, you know, the spine, well, mine anyway, is really good at handling um, lateral flexion as opposed to, you know, spinal extension. And many people will be the same. So, you know, look after your back in that regard. And that's obviously, you know, if you're looking after your back, you know, it's not going to hurt, you know, pressing overhead. Um Again, you know, coming back to the one arm press, because, you know, you're working one arm at a time, and you're not fixed with a barbell, you can find a position which feels really comfortable to press. And generally, if something feels good, you know, and the movement feels correct, your chances of injury are going to be quite low. If you're doing something that feels awkward and, you know, it doesn't feel right, um, chances are, you know, you're missing a few cues, you're not doing the movement correctly, you know, the list goes on. So you want to pick a variation of pressing um, that feels, you know, normal, that you can do correctly. Um, you know, the deltoids are made up of, you know, three separate, you know, heads. Um, so yeah, look, it's, it's an area of... Um, training that a lot of people struggle with, you know, they'll just end up injuring themselves if, you know, done incorrectly. Um, you know, in the deltoid as a whole, you know, it's obviously a very strong muscle and it's actually more, you know, developed, you know, to generate power as opposed to, you know, statically pressing overhead. And that's just due to the shape of the muscle as well. So yeah, look, you know, coming back to it, you want to have a, a strong, you know, movement overhead, um, choose whatever variation you want. Then, you know, some of your um, lateral raises to work, you know, more of the medial portion of the deltoid is going to help. And the other big one is rear delt flies. Now, 
you know, if you're only focused on, you know, the anterior aspect of the deltoid, um, your shoulder as a whole becomes, you know, not the best term, but unbalanced and just leaves you more prone to injury in general. Some people can get away with it. I'm not one that really can. Um, so I make sure I do rear delts. Um, and, you know, just treat the movement seriously. You want to probably overhead press once, you know, seriously a week and then just do a lighter shoulder session. The lightest shoulder session might be your front raises, your lateral raises, and all your rear delt stuff. Um, it'll pump a whole lot of blood into the shoulder and help it grow. But, you know, your main heavy overhead pressing, you know, treat that as a priority. Four sets of, you know, 12 to 15 reps will work really well. Um... And yeah, you know, just really try and take your time with the exercise as well. Don't rush through the sets. Give yourself anywhere between five to seven minutes between sets for full recovery when you're pressing heavy overhead. The other exercise that a lot of people also find, you know, beneficial will be, you know, bench press or narrow grip bench press, you know, because that's the most amount of weight people can generally press in general. So it's the most amount of load that people are going to get going through their arms um, when it comes to pressing. So, yeah, and then also, you know, working on your triceps because, you know, if your triceps are weak, that's going to limit the amount of weight you can shift overhead um, and it's going to limit, you know, the amount of growth you're going to get in your delts as well, you know, if your triceps are giving out. If you're one of those people and your triceps are really weak, then, you know, look at doing some of the front raises and lateral raises you know, beforehand, because that's just going to fatigue the shoulders and then move into some of your heavy pressing, you know, movements. That way your shoulder will, you know, fatigue before your triceps do. So that's just another thing to keep in mind. Um, and the other one, you know, if you struggle standing, you know, go for seated. But, you know, you would like to think that you're going to develop some of your upper back and treat that as a priority because if your scapula and upper back are really, you know, stable and strong, it's going to give you a better foundation to press from. Um, even if you're seated, you know, if your upper back is lagging behind in terms of development, you're never really going to get a great overhead press because you're just, you're not stable enough. Um, so, you know, treating your upper back as, you know, uh, a primary component to getting, you know, big shoulders is going to make a massive difference. So there's a few things in the equation. You know, you might start your overhead press session with, you know, overhead pressing followed by some of your lighter lateral raises and rear delt flies. After that, you might move into training some of your upper back, you know, just some quality rows, some pull-ups, um, things like that. But you just want to work the whole of that area thoroughly because that's in turn going to help you get bigger and stronger. And, you know, that's that's the goal when it comes to pressing overhead. Um, in terms of timeline, look, you know, training and getting stronger just takes a very long time. So don't be, you know, depressed if you don't see results overnight. But um, just stick with it, you know, treat the overhead press like a main lift. And as soon as you start treating it with that respect, um, and treating it, you know, seriously, you'll find that your shoulders as a whole are going to grow because you're giving it the time and energy and effort that you need in order to be successful. So um, that's just my take on it. If you guys have any questions, you know, comment below. Otherwise, have a great day wherever you are.